In this video, we continue our discussion of the real numbers by moving on to talking about carrying out operations on those numbers. Before we move on to operations though, we're first going to talk about what are called variables and constants and get in our head the difference between those two types of numbers. This is a different classification from some of those we've seen before. Now sometimes we'll find that it's useful to use letters instead of actual numbers to represent certain values. Now I'm sure you've seen this kind of thing before. For example, you probably remember the formula or the rule for the area of a circle. The area A is given by or equal to the irrational number pi multiplied by the square of the radius of the circle. And here we use A to represent the area, pi to represent the number pi, and R to represent the radius of the circle. One of the reasons why we do this, instead of using exact numbers or exact specific cases, is because we can use this one same rule to represent the area in terms of the radius for many different sizes of circles. For example, we could have a small circle like this one with a radius of this size and an area of this, or a much larger circle with a radius of, let's call it R star, and an area of A star. The same rule a equal to pi r squared satisfies or works for both of those circles. We say that r can vary depending on the circle we're talking about and as a result so can the value of a. So these quantities are often referred to as variables because they can vary. On the other hand the number pi 3.1415 and so on is always the same number it can't change so we refer to that number and numbers like it as constants. We'll be seeing variables and constants popping up all over the place, so it's important to know the difference between them because they're going to work in different ways and have different rules that apply to each of them. Let's have a look at an example here. I want to identify the constants and variables in what I'm saying is the following Wolfram Alpha output. Now, if you don't know what Wolfram Alpha is, it's a really neat little website called a computational knowledge engine. It can do all sorts of mathematical things. Uh, it can do a lot of the algebra and work that we'll be doing uh, in these videos. And it can also tell you other things like facts, like uh, the formula for a volume of a cone, for example. And that's what I've got here. When you go to Wolfram Alpha's website, it gives you an entry box here where you can enter in the, the thing that you want Wolfram Alpha to tell you the answer of or the information about. And here I've typed in volume of a cone. What pops up then is this information, what it interprets what you've written as, and then a result. Not shown on this screen is also some more information. But for us, what we want to look at is this little formula here, v equal to one third pi a squared h. Now what I've asked you to do is identify the constants, remember they're the numbers that don't change, and variables, the numbers that can change, in that output. Maybe pause the video if you like, and see if you can try that out for yourself right now. Okay, while you are away trying that out for yourselves, I've written down the five quantities that appear in this formula. And now I'm going to identify which are constants and which are variables. Okay, so the volume of our cone, V, of course that's going to be a number that can vary depending on the size of the cone. So V is a variable. One third, which appears here, is actually just a number. It is a constant. It never changes its value. It's always one third. So we can write that as a constant. The same applies to pi, even though we use a symbol for it, that's just uh, so that we don't have to write a number that goes on forever, pi is a constant, it doesn't change. Now a and h, these are uh, values that you can see here, circular cone with a centre at zero, and height h and radius a. So those are quantities that are related to the particular cone we're talking about. The height of the cone could change and the radius of the cone could change as well. So a and h are both variables. And there we go, we've identified our constants and variables in the Wolfram Alpha output. Okay, now that we know about variables and constants, we're going to move on to actual operations on the real numbers. Now to do this, we want to introduce a few symbols so that we know what the, the little symbols are that we're working with and what they mean. Most of these you'll have seen before, I think. So of course we know plus and minus, multiply. Sometimes you'll see multiply as a dot. Sometimes, weirdly, you'll also see multiplication being implied. So sometimes if we say 
A times B, we might just write AB. Uh, and that means the same as A times B. Uh, division, sometimes you see the, the dot and the line version, or sometimes it's a fraction like this. Sometimes you'll also see A over B in the fraction form for division. They all mean division. Plus minus, that's something we'll see a little bit later, probably not in this video, but essentially that means there's actually two values to the thing you're looking at. The version that has the addition and the version that has the subtraction. Parentheses or round brackets are often used to group operations that you want to do first. We'll talk about orders of operations soon. You may have seen in a previous video the absolute value or the magnitude of the number, which we write with uh, vertical bars. Remember that something like the absolute value of 2, that's just 2, but the absolute value of minus 2 is 2 as well. So it just gets rid of that negative sign whenever you see an absolute value. And the square root, you're probably familiar with that, the square root of x, uh, which we write like that. It's just a number which, uh, when squared, gives you the x value. Okay, so we've got some symbols now that we can use to represent our operations. Now that we've got the symbols, we have to use uh, specific rules to uh, operate on the numbers that we're working with. So here's a few of those that'll help you to figure out what you're doing um, that work for uh, addition on the left and multiplication on the right. So we have thing called commutativity. Basically, the, the order of addition doesn't matter and the order of multiplication doesn't matter. Those operations are called commutative. Associativity just tells you about how you can uh, associate things or bracket them off to do them first. And both of these two ways both mean the same thing. Again, multiplication, the same as well. So you can do BC first, or you can do A times B first, and you get the same result. Uh, there's a thing called an identity. The identity of addition for the real numbers is 0 because A plus 0 is A. It doesn't change anything. In multiplication, the identity is the number 1 because A times 1 is A. We've also got additive and multiplicative inverses. The inverse for addition is the negative value of the same number because it gives you back the 0, the identity. And the multiplicative inverse is 1 over the number that you start with because when you multiply those together, you always end up with 1. Another law that we'll need to use from time to time is called the distributive law. It just tells us how to bust brackets open, basically. So you can see here A times B plus C is the same as AB plus AC. Sometimes you'll see me doing this, saying I'm going to go A times B plus A times C. And similarly, when the bracketing is on the first part, A times C and B times C to give us AC plus BC. So they're just some rules that we need to take note of. Now something that's really important uh, for real life, but also because it causes endless debates in little Facebook quizzes, is the order in which you have to carry out operations. Okay, so you'll often see people arguing about whether they do multiplication first or addition first or what they have to do. In mathematics, we always stick to an order which looks like this. Always do things that are inside brackets or parentheses first. And you start with the innermost parentheses and move outwards. Next, you look at orders such as the powers of numbers and square roots. Follow that up by any multiplication and division, moving left to right. And finally, addition and subtraction, again moving from left to right. If you follow those rules, what we call BOMDAS, you should always get the right order of operations carried out and you should get the correct result. So let's try it out with a few examples. Here we've got four examples where we've got to evaluate the expressions. Let's look at the first one, 15 divided by 3 plus 2. Another way of writing that is 15 over 3 plus 2. Often when we have these fractions like this, remember that the things on top and the things on bottom have implied parentheses around them. So we need to do that 3 plus 2 first. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. 15 over 3 plus 2, I'm going to say that that's 15 over 5. And 15 divided by 5 is just 3. We've got a very similar question coming up next. But you notice that there's no parentheses on this one. So we've just got 15 on 3 plus 2. This time, our order of operations, remember it from back here, tells me that I've got to do that division before I do this addition. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And I add to that 2, and I end up with 7. So notice, quite different answers because the order is different. I still had to follow the order of operations, though. 
Next up in C, we've got 9 minus 3 times 2. Again, I need to follow the order of operations, and it tells me I need to do the multiplication before the subtraction. So this becomes 9 minus 3 times 2 is 6. 9 minus 6 is, of course, 3. Now in D, we have 9 minus 3, this time in parentheses, as you can see here, and then multiplied by 2. So this is different from part C because we've got to do the 9 minus 3 first because parentheses or brackets uh, take precedence over the multiplication. So 9 minus 3 is 6 multiplied by the 2 and we end up with an answer of 12. Again, quite different answers because the orders had to be changed. Just make sure that you're always remembering that bombed ass order of operations and you'll get there. So a few more just to get this home. Notice here I've written BODMAS. It doesn't actually make any difference that it's BOMDAS or BODMAS because remember we just do divisional multiplication moving from left to right. So here we've got in A, 16 plus minus 5 minus 8. And this is a bit of a tricky one. Those brackets don't actually need to be there, really. We can just write that as 16, noting that a plus minus becomes a minus, minus 5 minus 8, 16 minus 5 is 11 and minus 8, and that's going to give us 3 in the end. Now in B, we've got 16 on minus 8, and plus 3 minus the 5. The order of operations says I have to do that division first. 16 divided by minus 8 is going to be minus 2, plus 3, minus 5, and now I can carry out the additions and the subtractions moving from left to right. So minus 2 and 3 makes 1, take 5, and 1 take 5 is going to leave me with minus 4. Here in C, we have minus 12 over 4 minus 2. Now remember that this line means division, but whenever we have things written in fraction form, the top is essentially in parentheses, and so is the bottom. I don't have to do anything on the top, so I'm going to leave that as minus 12, but on the bottom I need to do this 4 minus 2 first. So 4 minus 2, of course, is 2, and then we carry out the division minus 12 on 2 is going to be minus 6. All right, running out of room for part D, so I'm going to jump over the page. You can see this one is quite a bit longer and a bit more involved than the ones we've done so far. But remember, we're still just going to apply bod mass or bomb das, whatever you like to call it. So brackets first, and remember we start with the innermost brackets. In this case, that's the 1 plus 4. Now I'm going to do this on a, a new line because I've run out of room. So I leave everything else, minus 3 outside of 8, and minus 1 plus 4 I do and get 5. Close that off, plus 7, minus 10. Again, I'm still working on brackets, so I've got minus 3. Remember that that missing operation sign there is just a multiply. When there's no sign there, it's a multiply. 8 minus 5 I do and get 3, plus 7, minus 10. Now I've got to do multiplication first, so minus 3 times 3 is minus 9, plus 7, minus 10, and addition and subtraction from left to right. So minus 9 plus 7 is minus 2, take 10, and minus 2 take 10 is minus 12. So there we go, a little bit more uh, tricky example in that case. But again, just applying the BODMAS or BODMAS rules to figure out which order we have to do them in. Okay, so that's it for this video. Remember in this one we looked at the start at the difference between variables and constants. That's going to be important as we move through to other videos. And we also introduced the operation symbols for plus and minus and all of those sorts of things. And then talked about the correct order of operations, the BOMDAS or BODMAS, and did a few examples of those. Now the best way to get uh, better at these and used to applying the order of operations is just to do an absolute bunch of them. So do as many of those as you can and see how you're getting better at them as you go along.